to come a bit closer than we anticipated. Yeah, that's a problem. And Doris can have a strategy for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, th
So, but it, as a way of, instead of making films, I've actually found a way of paralleling the sort of um, ways of working in, by sort of editing, um, layering, and allowing the images to grow almost out of the dark through the printmaking. I like the sort of theatricality and the artifice, the sort of temporal nature of film. I guess that's not, not going to. Okay. This is um, a Wolfley, Adolf Wolfley. I've always been a drawer and a scribbler, and my work evolved slowly, morning, um, by sort of knitting, unravelling, building up and cutting out, which is perhaps why I was initially drawn to printmaking. Uh, I discovered it when I was on my foundation course, actually. I found etching and screen printing initially, you know, a totally liberated drawing process. Uh, I could generate a really exciting, fast dialogue, and I could work large and quick, and I'd always work as sort of big as I could get on the press. It was very much about the sort of physicality of making and the sort of challenge, almost like a sculptural way of attacking the metal. I did my degree at Norwich, and was the first year of a new printmaking course. So actually, there were only five of us on the course, and we had these huge studios and absolutely open access to, to almost design the course that we wanted. Uh, we were very self-motivated, and we actually constructed our own methodology, which sort of paralleled the way that Barto worked, which was about actually time. And it's a very um, non-parallel to, con to contemporary forms of education. Um, which are much more structured. This was actually about, it was like being in an atelier. You just work at your own pace and, and find your own way of discovering and your own rhythm of working. I've been looking at people like Wolfley, Daga, uh, Lorenzetti and Sassetta, outsider artists, early Renaissance artists. I think a lot to do with artists who work with storytelling. And uh, when I was at the Slade, I would spend a lot of time in the Scala, which again was a local cinema, which would show like 24 hour movie sessions and you know and uh, those were incredible places for people down and out to sort of hang out it was a, a great retreat I remember Paula giving coming to give me a tutorial when I was on my MA and I got really stuck and she said well what do you do when you get stuck and I thought oh god what does she want to hear and I said well I go to the British Museum I have research and I said what do you do she said so I go shopping she said I go to liberties and I look at the fabric and I thought mm, yeah that's much more honest <laughs> and I said well actually I'll go to the movies she thought that was a much better answer. Um, from the Slade, I was awarded a travel scholarship uh, to go off to Italy to devour the early Renaissance and Cinecittà. So I did a sort of project at Cinecittà and I sort of wander up to discover all these sort of things that I'd only seen in reproduction. And as you can see, I got very obsessed with cryptics. Um, they seem to offer a perfect sort of narrative structure with a sort of beginning, middle and end and the sort of comic strip-like predella at the bottom. Uh, the early ones used this sort of interior... I don't know if you can see it, it seems a bit crazy. <laughs> I'm talking about these images and you can probably only see a ghost. But do, you know, why don't you walk around if you want to come up closer and then you can actually see them a bit better. This is for the Shadow. Um, I was using this sort of in haunted... I was interested in haunted sort of... They're very dreamlike structures. Um, Interior, exterior constructions. I like haunted dolls' houses with gremlins under the stairs. I mean, the process is a bit dated. They were very sort of heavily worked etchings, layers and layers of sugar lift and aquatint and scraping back and using electric sander. Images perhaps from uh, childhood memories. But it was a very reflective period of um, a personal hunt, a sort of creation of a personal and mental and physical space. These are triptychs which are about six foot by three foot. So again, each plate would be as large as I could get on the press. Um, this is Falls of Shadow. And I was trying to make a sort of dreamlike tableau drawing on Apuleius's Golden Ass and uh, Fellini's Satyricon. Also, I'd spent a very strange wintry time in Venice um, where these incredibly large objects sort of transported on trolleys or boat. And so it has this sort of uncanny daily procession of the washing machines and huge packages emerging out of the mist. And the stone things. I've been looking at the Epic of Gilgamesh. So I spent a lot of time in the Classics Library. 
when I was at the UCL. They're all very heavily worked etchings, as I said, scrape back, sort of similar to Bartow's process, where you would layer and rework and sort of really sort of bash things about. Lots of aquatint, sugar lift, aquatint, um, dry pot, anything, everything would go in there. But no colour, a long period with no colour. But very much about the story, about the essence of the subject. And of course, as you know, once you start to get familiar with something, with a form, uh, you have this time for a radical change. You mustn't get too comfortable. I'm very sort of aware of, but we mentioned this yesterday, the comfort zone. Um, so I moved into a new studio, and I had to rethink all my sort of preconceptions and comfortable habits. And I had this big studio, I bought a big press, and of course the work went about this small, went absolutely tiny. And you have to go into the black hole, and it's tough, and every time you go through it, it's really tough. Uh, you have to go into the black hole and find a way of digging yourself out. And this is something you can only do individually, but it's a very familiar pattern, which artists don't often talk about, the difficult times. So after sort of the usual panic, uh, I remember what I used to do when I was a tiny kid. I used to go to the V&A, my mother would go off to lectures, and I would sit in the costume department on the floor, and I would just draw and draw and draw in the semi-dark. And actually I realised it's a bit like being in the cinema, really. sort of, <laughs> your brain goes somewhere else. So I made a long, instead of making the triptychs, I made these, it was a series of 11, I think, called The Cruelest Month. These are small? They're, at, they're actually about, well, they were small for me at the time, they were that size. So that was a sort of intermediary way of changing, changing your mental space as much as anything. But the big changes I made, and again, do come up closer, because I made four grid pieces, and this was quite a liberating time for me. It was a long time ago, um, but I made these individual squares, which were like 12 inches square, which is what, 30 centimetres square. And I made lots and lots of them, and I would play around with them on the studio floor. I worked a lot on the floor, uh, like a Scrabble game, like a Scrabble board. And I, they, so you could actually rearrange the stories. And from the V&A, I'd been looking at the um, sort of architectural structures uh, in costumes of sort of containment and support and suppression, which you find in, um, I was looking at corsets and crinolines. So I took out the ground, and these are sort of floating figures. And when we were talking about the hearts and organs yesterday. They use sort of archetypal fairy tale symbols of hearts and lungs. Uh, speech organs, pins and needles. <coughs> so again, they have a very different form. Uh, you have to wait till next time. <laughs> it's a taster, it's a clue. <laughs> so you can see the bits you want to see. And I would hand colour them with watercolour. So I was very, but the colour was coming back in. So I made four grid pieces. So they were four feet square. The actual finished prints were about that size. It was called Snow White in 16 Pieces, uh, The Terrible Act, O oh Sweet Jesus, and Muffed. Fairy tales. It was all looking at revisiting fairy tales in an adult way. Uh, and those, that was the first time I managed to work the images into a book. I'd made books when I was on foundation in a very, and I like the sort of throwaway nature of it, more like a sort of concrete poet's attitude. Um, I love the artist's book form. But it's very intimidating. It has a huge history and weight to it, which I was sort of a bit nervous about. Um, and so I started using. I started. I was starting to think about babies' rag books, which are made of fabric. And I thought, ah, that sort of it sort of liberated me. It meant um, so I started using old cereal packets to cover them, and I'd make them myself. So now, of course, the with sort of everything being digital, the publication is is much more flexible. I think people are much more fluid with that. But this was at a slightly different time when it had this sort of authority of book art, a different section. So I started to make books in a very free way, uh, books with images, picture books. And then again, you know, the format of the square uh, had to be shifted. So I started, again, I was thinking of friezes, I was thinking of murals, I was thinking of the Villa of Mysteries in um, Pompeii. And um, I made these a whole series of very large, I thought of them as mules. Anyway, this is Beastie Wild Things down the chimney. It's about that high, about six foot wide. They were just huge black and white etchings. So we're talking about sugar lift. This is all sugar lift. 
big brush stroke, sugar lift, acutin, spit bite. Uh, again, so maybe hard ground, soft ground, all these washy things are spit bite. You know, maybe if you want to see them later, we can actually see them individually. Okay, that's what she's talking about. But what I like to do is sort of make them, it was like kids colouring in books. I make very, very free drawings and then I colour them in, which actually takes much longer than the actual prints. So they were coloured in with um, gouache and watercolour, so very bright fluorescent colours. Um, they were, yeah, like kids colouring in books. And this is Big Monster Secret, all the sort of children in the sort of poisonous playground, up to no good. Actually, this is, you really do actually have to see them a bit closer. <laughs> uh, and Slash. Again, they're about three feet by six feet. Then, of course, you know, that sort of structure uh, becomes quite familiar. So I worked, I had to sort of subvert my own safety nets and made a series of towers. Tower, Babel, and these were zigzag books. And again, this one I would have bought, but it was, even the book is that size. So it works as a strip, and it's very, very tall. The whole series are very tall ones. And it's a very difficult format. But I wanted each um, page to be like a stage. So again, the idea of theatricality, the idea of like the early Renaissance, where you could see inside the house and outside the house, like seeing inside the mind and outside the mind. It's like the conscious and unconscious. So this was called Downfall. And um, there was like a, yeah, so you'd have a sort of narrative subplot down the side, like sort of Windsor Mackay's cartoons or early Felix the Cat. And because on the books I'd been on the prints, I'd been using a lot of spray paint, so I would cut out stencils out of um, acetate, because I didn't have any screen printing, and spray very fluorescent flat colours and lots and lots of lecture set. I actually put the print aside. It was the first time I'd actually put... The idea of a, an etching for me is you can work in directly. So in a way it releases you. Releases your sort of conscious mind to actually make the images indirectly. Uh, so this was the first time I just made a whole... I make drawings all the time. But this was the first time I made a large series of drawings uh, that were to be shown as finished pieces. And again, these were six foot, six feet long, just on paper. So these are ink and spray paint. Um, is that stuff you use? Um, Tipex. And these are tiny stencils. So I cut tiny, tiny stencils. We're talking about Charlotte's cut things. It's this sort of minute, obsessive way of working with things. So these, again, these are called drawings from the cutting room floor. So they're very... Not cinematic, but they're very film reference. They're sort of film genre referencing. So this was Crash. And Plug. So I did a lot of volcanoes. We were talking about volcanoes. I had a lot of time in Sicily and explosions, and of course the whole sexual undertones of volcanoes. And spray paint. So all these are tiny, tiny stencils which will be spray painted. And lots of lecture sets. I just noticed somebody had some lecture set over there. This is hedge and brinestone. This is enormous. So this is like eight feet long, four feet high. Fell pen, spray paint, the lecture set, sort of ridiculous amount of sort of lecture set used as a, a non-language really. It's like disrupting the language. But I found the characters started to come too familiar. Oh, and there's a, actually there's a catalogue there. You can have a little catalogue. So in fact, you can see them better there. This one. You can keep. Well, yeah, yeah, you can keep that. These are to be kept, not the book, unfortunately. Those three you can keep. Um, so when they became too familiar, there's a danger of sort of reworking the cast. So again, you have to make. I have to make a very deliberate shift, and which brings on lots of panic and anxiety. It's. Uh, so I started to think, well, how do I make work without a figure? How do I make work without a narrative? And I started to look at the Renaissance paintings and look at the rocks in the background. So I would take out the figure. So I started to draw rocks. But of course the rocks evolved into a series of figures. So these are very small, so these you really do have to look at. Close. I mean, they're small anyway. They're on big pieces of paper and they're made with tiny, 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 tiny 0.5 brushes and ink and gouache. I made hundreds and hundreds of them. And I say they're rocks, and people go, what no, she's on about. But they actually are drawn from the rock structures. 
But again, you know, one central core of imagery never, that doesn't change. It shifts and it evolves, but it's always what you're interested in. So again, it's relationships and characters and people. And these are called, uh, yeah, How Clever of God. And I also the change of scale. You know, we, have, we talk about this and it's a very obvious thing. I would work on the floor, work very large, or you're working on an etching press. It's a very physical activity with a process. And then, you know, it's to do with the shoulder and then to sit at the table and then work with the wrist. It's a very, it's a, it has to change the work because you're changing your scale, you're changing your, your projection, you know, from a large projection to a sort of mi microscopic projection. Okay, this is one I did want to bring, but it is huge. It's a book. It's called Bly's Bounty Box. So this is etching, and this is Letraset. It's a very heavy, very long coffin like but it's actually difficult to carry, not, it's not difficult, but it's heavy to carry, so certainly not with wine. It's, it's a book. It's a book. Okay. It's a book. So, these are pages from the book. Um, and it was made for an exhibition that there's a museum in London called the Museum of Garden History. No, actually the Museum of Gardens. And it's a beautiful old church in Lambeth. And it has hundreds and hundreds of people are buried there. And it's got, the lists of people that are buried there are someone like, someone who was struck by lightning. Um, you know, there's amazing stories. Uh, William Bly, all sorts of characters. Uh, but also sort of anonymous people. They're very strange stories of people who are buried. So I think about 30 artists were invited to respond to that, to do anything. So I decided to resurrect William Bly. Mainly as an excuse to watch all the versions of Mutiny on the Bounty. Most of my work is an excuse to watch films or read specific books, do specific pieces of research. Um, and this one referenced very much, it was like children's activity books, colouring in books, dot dot books, uh, with crayons and puzzles. And if, in fact, I did workshops and some of the kids actually did draw on the print. So these are etchings, hand coloured etchings. So this was like um, paint by numbers. So I actually put the numbers in with the letter set. So I don't know if you know the film, or you know the story of William Bly. No. Okay, I'm not going really, to. I'll tell you later. I'll tell you over dinner. <laughs> and the, I, I bought this one, so this one is so small you won't be able to see it. This is called Endless Landscape, and this refers starting to do the idea of working, collaborating with other artists. I mean, printmaking is a very, almost a sort of collaborative, it's not a collaborative process, but it's a shared process because you're working in a studio. There's no secrets, you know, especially with Barto. You would say, oh, no, you can't see it. How did you do that? Oh, it's my special day. It's all about conversation. But actually, when you decide to work with someone on a collaboration, it's quite a different idea and something I really like and I find really hard, which I usually take on the things that I find really hard. So this is called Endless Landscape, and it's a collaboration with Joe Stockham, who runs the MA at the Royal College of Art in Printmaking. And she'd given me this Victorian card game. I don't know if any of you know it. It consists of like 20 cards. They're usually about that size of landscape. And the idea is that you can put them in any order. And they map, they make a landscape. They make different landscapes. So the points always link up. They always connect. <coughs> and we were talking about doing, we said, well, it'd be really nice to work together. I really like your work, and I really like your work. I think we had too much to drink. We said, hey, let's make an endless landscape. It's not a great idea until we woke up in the morning. <laughs> what have we done? And both of us realised, one, we don't work in landscape. She hadn't actually done any etching for years. She worked all sorts of screen printing, digital sculptural work. Anyway, we did it. And with the help of the technician at the Royal College, we just made, measured out four, five points in, on an etching plate. And then we would actually made a series of etchings that would link, connect in any way. Anyway, you can have a look at these later. So, as with most collaborations, you say, yeah, 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 we'll collaborate, we meet up. But we didn't meet up at all, because we were both too busy. So they do link up, they connect. The points are, the points do connect. <coughs> I've only got, these are the images that I did. So I was looking at more, you know, it's science fiction, it's cinema, it's storytelling, it's slightly bizarre landscapes I was interested in, and still am, really. 
And these are just etchings. Yeah, so when we came together, we thought, oh gosh, we, we both finished the prints and we don't know if it's going to work. And it's like, the, what are you, you're building a bridge from two sides of the river. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. And this one actually is the only one I bought because it's a small book. It's called A to Z. And it was a piece, I wanted to bring something that was a real print. Um, and it's got, it's got examples of different processes, basically. Lots of sheen collet and stuff. You can have a look. It's eight years. It's the black one. And I wanted to, I was interested in alphabets, I was interested in language and a way of sort of disrupting language or reappropriating language. So this was an A to Z of fictitious places. I thought, oh great, I can watch all my favourite movies and they're all full, you know, Casablanca. Or, but for some reason I decided the places had to be fictitious. And of course you look at films, um, Jamaica Inn, Casablanca, they're all real places. So I, most of the names... Uh, come from fiction, from Borges, Calvino, um, Simpsons, the Beano. There were a couple of tricky ones like Y or X, I think. Anyway, so that was the that was the book there. And with the books, uh, I know I work with a bookbinder, a uh, really lovely who who does the yellow covers and the black books, and then I the, the cover is spray painted. So they're very simple. They're very handmade. Of this book. This is the A, a is. Oh, okay. it's so it's just etching. Okay, so this is Shin Anyway, we'll talk about this later. Electroset, Shin Collet, lots of stuff. So basically anything goes. <coughs> oh. But they're also not really redundant print processes, aren't they? Um, okay, where we got to? Oh, yes, yeah, so I was interested in notions of language and text. Uh, kids' alphabets and... Um, So this notion of the publication, which again is a bigger, much more common now, and I'm glad it sort of actually found a new form. So I wanted, to, I was interested in um, making, I wanted to make these huge, something unwieldy Penny Dreadfuls, which is like a cheap comic, Victorian cheap comic. So again, you can't, if you could see this, these are about four feet square. They're like two pages <coughs> of a newspaper. And it was from a series of work I was doing called From Hackney Archives to Hackney Gazette. Hackney's a borough in London. And I would go to the archives and they've got all the amazing stories of the characters who lived there since the beginning, whenever the archive started. And the Hackney Gazette is a cheap, rubbish newspaper that comes out every week, which has really gory stories. I mean, it's just crap. And it's full of the most hilarious stories. Uh, I do not mock. So I would mix these Story, they're different stories of characters from different times and sort of collide them into a series. So these are a series of etchings and then I'd play around with them on the floor and they'd be collaged onto the paper. So again, it's sort of chine collets, tissue papers, cut paper, to make almost like, again, like a mathematical game. Um, and that developed into a series called Conversations with Angels, which was working with, uh, I was looking at John Dee, who was, uh, that's my space, okay. So John Dee was, um, he was an astronomer, an astrologer, a cartographer, an advisor to Queen Elizabeth I. And he would perform these amazing actions or seances with Edward Kelly and he was trying to, I mean he is actually a, a true character and um, historical character with an enormous amount and he would practice alchemy and um, in these seances he was trying to, he would connect, he would, they were oh, recording, oh this is a book, okay so there you can, at least you can see something there. So those are the etchings. So he was trying to rediscover the lost Enochian language which is a language in the Book of Enoch, which is supposed to be the true language of God. So then he would discover uh, the key to true knowledge. So that's what his quest was, which I think is quite a good, ambitious quest to use. <laughs> anyway, again, so these were big, huge comics. And alongside the comic would be, I made a series of, it's like an unbound book. So these were folded images. So this is all etching, etching with a bit of letter set. 
and I put them into a, a wooden box, which was like a giant cigar box. Because when you're kids, or kids sort of um, collect stuff and put them in like cigar boxes were sort of common parlance of the time. And a lot of the lost documents of Dee were actually rediscovered after his death in a hidden, in a secret compartment in a trunk. So again, this sort of reference, all my work has fact and fiction, cocktails shaken up. <laughs> so these are sort of figures and characters from alchemical figures. So these are all etchings. Uh, and what I do is put a heavy aqua tint on and then I draw on it with an acid resist pen. So you get a very strong white line. Lots and lots and lots of layers of aqua tint. Oh yeah, they're in the book so you can see them there. Uh, and there's a writer in Britain called Ian Sinclair who's quite an established novelist and poet. And he wrote an essay for, oh you wrote the essay in the catalogue. Um, and he was sort of fascinated by, I knew he had a connection with Dee. And so we developed a very good working relationship. And he was writing this book called Hackney That Rose Road Empire, which is uh, a book about stories of Hackney. He's a walker. He writes about walking. He, I think, coined the was it psychogeographical term. So he asked me to work to make... So when he was writing his book called Hackney That Rose Road Empire, he would send me a chapter. And again, like it, all my collaborations, it was very open. He said, well, if it works, you know, if you can respond to it, then see what happens, but no pressure. It wasn't like I wasn't an illustrator, but it felt like a, a sort of honest collaboration. So he would send me his chapter, and I would revisit the area. That, it was about an area in, in Hackney and characters. So I would go and revisit this particular area, although I lived there and I knew it. And then I would make a series. I made loads and loads. I made these maps. So again, these are ink and gouache with these tiny sort of 0.5 brushes and gouache. So they're fact and fiction. There is actually a bit of map. You could actually almost follow it. But it's like someone following a map on a, on a third world, on a parallel world, or someone, you know. So it's got a lot of drugs taken, and so it's subterranean, so it's fictitious. But it's based on reality. It has essences of trueness in it. So these are a series of maps, drawings, and a whole lot of etchings, which went in. These went into the book. It's actually published by Hem Hamish Hamilton. So again, these were. This is the Owl Man. There's an Owl Man in Hackney, and uh, it was full of sort of outsiders and people who've been there for donkey's years. And he had a house full of owls. There's a Mole Man who made this amazing tunnels. <laughs> Amazing tunnels. I mean, for years and years. Under his house? Or? Well, under his house, under the whole of Hackney. I mean, he actually, not the whole of Hackney, but it's a big area. He actually <laughs> caused enormous amounts of stuff. You can go down, you couldn't go down there now, but he went down there and his wife and children, it's almost, you know, there was no murders or anything unusually, but he, yeah, went right down and these tunnels under the ground. Oh. Alone. Alone, he made it alone, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, the house is. You know, uh, the bag ladies, <laughs> the flanners, uh, stories. He made a lot of Super 8 film in the, oh God, in the 60s, 60s and 70s of Hackney, which were amazing. So stories, these are stories of dinner parties and um, Super 8 projection. A lot of murders in Hackney, you know, it's where the Quay brothers lived. <coughs> and hairdressers. And this is a book, okay, so this you can actually see. This is a more recent book called Peril. And you can see, uh, yeah, this one you have to come up close, because the fabric, this was for an exhibition uh, about narrative, about storytelling. We all went, oh no, not storytelling, we are sort of sick of fairy tales, that was, you know, a long time ago. So I decided to um, rework Bluebeard, as told by Fred West. <coughs> so it's a very dark perception of the storytelling, which Bluebeard is, of course. So I worked with this artist called Sophie Lascelles, who does a lot of projection with 35mm slides, 16mm film, Super 8, and paper cutouts. And a screenwriter who was actually writing something about the uh, Yorkshire Ripper. So, you know, we were both on the, all on the same level. And again, like most of these collaborations, we didn't actually meet for the whole project because she was in Edinburgh and he was in Yorkshire. But anyway, we sort of made the work and then 
fortunately, when, like with most good collaborations, when we met together, it just gelled. So we made a book with her, and she would rework glass slides that she'd buy, uh, uh, manipulate them digitally, and I had a series of etchings. And the there was text from the... Um, I might actually have some images. Text which were quotes from serial killers. So this is Rose West's fur coat. I mean, there's a lot written. And it, this is Fred West. Uh, Fred West would actually... His wife was, would be sent out as a prostitute and he would film her through a little hole that he drilled in the wall. I mean, uh, do you know about Fred West? You don't want to know about Fred. If you don't know about Fred West, <laughs> don't know about Fred West. Anyway, he would seduce very young women, very young girls, and take them into his caravan and just chop them up and murder them and bury them. It's a true story. And bury them in his cellar. Very joyful work, <coughs> as everyone says to uh, when are you going to make a comedy? <laughs> okay, so various sources of mine sort of include people like uh, William Bly, Moby Dick, Fred West, Swedenborg, uh, Morris Edgerton, and uh, later on, a, it's a bit like a correspondence between Bob Cobbing and Edith Sitwell. This is uh, called I Murder So That I May Come Back. And again, you, if you can, uh, this is Letraset, so it's fragmented Letraset. Um, it was a film installation, and I shot 16mm film um, and made some sculptural objects of sort of samurai. They're made out of rubbish. They're rubbish figures made out. They are like samurai samurai warriors or um, the strange army of John Venable's trolls. So they were looking at child murderers. Um, the quotes were from Mary Bell. So these are letters, that, and these are the texts that she would. Inscribe. And Mary Bell was one of the first major cases of a child who they didn't know how to deal with child murderers um, long before the Bulger boys. Okay, so this is a bit lighter. Okay, this one we have here. Postcards from the Seventh Floor was a collaboration with Ian. And it was a <coughs> it was um, he it was a commission that he'd been asked to do, he had a whole series of poems about the coast, and one of his, he lives in an amazing 30s sort of building, which is like a liner, which was built just before the war. So it was this, anyway, I won't go into the building, but it is quite an incredible 30s building, which then, of course, when the war came, it crumbled down, it was going to be this new sort of empire. There might be a picture of it in there somewhere. So he had written these poems, but they weren't finished and they weren't edited, so the idea was we were going to make a collaboration. So I didn't read the poems. It's like, so I don't... The text, if I work with a writer, it's not an illustration. With these, I haven't read his poems, but we talked about the ideas. And the ideas were set in this crumbling block of flats. So I was envisaging all the people who lived there and the films they were watching. Like They were all watching these films in their separate flats and oblivious to everyone else around them. So again, it was an excuse to watch lots of films. So I would collide these... Film image. So these are okay. So this is a black, black, black etched plate, solid black, <coughs> and all the drawing is done with letraset and letra tape. So the chicken is letraset, and these are all letra tape, and we collide them with um, headlines from local newspapers. So this is like from rear window, and I did actually have a good excuse to watch loads of movies. This is funky foam, so there's a lot more collage in here. So from Walt Disney cartoons, from the very early ones. So again, funky foam and letra set. Westerns cartoons using, again, foam and letra set. And I got very keen on the postcard form. Who were we talking about? Who was doing postcards yesterday? Mm -hmm. no. Okay, so it's a great form. These were bigger than postcards. I would actually make them bigger, because I can, and then I reduce them. To, for a digital do a digital series. So there was a show about Moby Dick. Somebody. So my father had worked. One of his first jobs was to was to do the storyboard on John Huston's Moby Dick film in '54 or something. So I had the the storyboards were watercolors, and he would do. I mean, I think he did about 600 watercolors. Every shot and every frame and every camera angle would be a watercolor. They were amazing. And usually the director got the storyboards, and so we had, but we had photographs. So I referred to 600 photographs of the story, original storyboard, and of course watched the movie, and made a series called uh, Postcards from the Pequod. 
and made a series of, like, they were very bad sculptures, they were like bad props. So I like the idea of bad sculpture. They made up polystyrene and hot water bottles, anything with that I could sort of cut up. And a 16mm film that came made a 16mm film to go with it. So these are actually images, my reworking of the storyboard, which is a reworking of the novel. And the quotes are from the original film. And then another series of postcards. It's all right, I'm nearly coming to the end. You must be dying of suffocation. This is called Edith Mixes Concrete. And again, this was a commission for this amazing Saison Poetry Library in the South Bank Centre in London. And I think it's supposed to have every supposedly British 20th century poet. But it has some earlier ones and it has some non-British ones, but it, that's the basic concept of it. To do whatever I wanted. So I chose Edith Sitwell and Bob Cobbing. Totally unrelated, completely different um, class, different eras, and both to do with sort of disrupting and breaking down language, which is what I was interested in. Bob Cobbing's a concrete poet, hence Edith makes his concrete. So I would make, I made a box of postcards, it's actually a very beautiful box. I did have it all wrapped up and think, can I bring it in? And I weighed my bag, I thought, no, you can't bring it. <laughs> so but if you come to London, you're very welcome to come to the studio. <laughs> <laughs> the studio in North London, you're all welcome. Um, so again, these were heavily etched black plates, so I used them like a blackboard. So you're still incorporating the print process. And then I would sp make stencils and spray paint and leopard tape onto the background. So it's like drawing on a blackboard. So there were three, each series would be three postcards. One would be an image from Edith, one would be a collage of their text, and then one would be an image from Bob. So much more cartoon-like, quite sort of playful, but again, with sort of undertones. So some of the language you're meant to read and some of the language you can't read. If you can't read it from there, it's not a text. <laughs> so this is a, vi a vinyl cutting out. So again, I would get offcuts from the vinyl guy. He'd give me all his bags of offcuts. So everything is to do with, again, redundant processes. Okay, so this is uh, one of the last unbound books. It's called Splice. And again, the etching is the black. Um, it's a sort of asphasic comic drawn from sort of neurological case studies. I was working actually at the Wellcome Institute uh, and with sort of people like Oliver Sacks and Paul Block looking at actual um, physical, actual real case studies. Uh, this one is particularly to do with um, loss of language. I'm interested in um, a sort of mix of Alzheimer's and language disruption. So these sort of phantom limbs misbehave. These stories are amazing. I mean, they really are. And you were working with Oliver Sacks? No, I wish. I just read his books and steal his <laughs> ideas, steal his stories. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea. Maybe I could uh, send him some pictures. Yeah. So disembodied voices and sort of tangled brains and uh, containing this sort of time bomb. And there was this great chap who dreamt he was a dog and he woke up with this, this is one of his recent books actually, uh, with an enhanced sense of smell and colour, like the dog. <laughs> and then I think it lasted for a while and then it went away. It was very strange. Okay, so I think we're nearly there. This is, um, I'm just going to give you a preview of some of the stuff I'm working on at the moment. We're talking about black paper. So I'm actually working a series of hieroglyphic friezes. Uh, again, using the image, it's like sign and symbol, text and image. So although there's no text in here, I want the forms to sort of have that sort of reference. They're large spray paintings, so each, this is what, seven sheets or something, and each sheet of paper is like this, so they're, I don't know, six feet long or something. Spray painted. Whoops. Okay, yeah, a bit out of centre. Um, I'm looking at sort of Alice, science fiction meets Alice through looking glass. So um, I did a lot of work with Alice and Lewis Carroll. And again, his sort of loss of language, paralleling Al Alice with um, Alzheimer's, 
uh, Lewis Carroll's sort of play with linguistic puzzles, uh, his sort of contradictions and riddles and jokes, um, oscillating between sort of sense and nonsense. So it has become almost like visiting another world. So the, the Alice parallels are, you know, they're always sort of hidden or discreet. Done. So that's it. So, and we're back to La Scala, back to the cinema for our cinema break. So thank you very much, and I'm sorry you couldn't see the work, but I hope you will have an opportunity to see it. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a very good idea. I shall leave it there. So there you have your, whatever you call it, your guide. You can choose what you want to look at. That's a brilliant idea. Then uh, your library. But again, it's the notion of game playing and of collaboration. And, you know, it's, it's difficult because you have to let go of your preconception and it's not just your ego, you have to, you know, so yeah. collaboration is. So I think it's really informative. So this is all edging with hard ground, very simple. Um, just really fine, fine, fine. Yes. Her, her. Okay. That's fine. So this one is fine. So this one is ready to go, and we need some without dust. No, without dust. So this is our beautiful sugar lift mix and a great supply of brushes. Okay, so the principle behind a sugar lift is you can get a positive brush stroke. It's one of the few things in etching that you're not working in reverse, you're working positively. So my assistant here is going to produce the most masterpiece with the liquid ground. You are indeed, but we were going to do one on your already used yeah, plate. Yeah, but, but my, my used plate is, is in the active box. It's after my assistant has let me down again. <laughs> so no responsibility to me. Because this one is without okay. the active the other one is with the Good. Well, we're going to do both. Yes. So choose your tool. Yes, yes tool. Yeah. 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 Oh, you're going to do it on your own plate? Yes. Uh, so if you want, want to try, because I... Okay, who wants to have a go? Bertil, you buy. We're just going to do a positive brush. Go on. <laughs> Don't be frightened. So also, do you have any white spirit? White spirit? A little white tiny white bit of white spirit. Can you drink? You can draw on that. Yeah. I might then come and ruin your drawing. So, um, do we need the camera slightly closer? Uh, closer. Okay, this is what. Oh, wow. That's oh, fine, it'll do the same. Now, this is the test of how well degreased your plate is. Because if it's a perfectly degreased plate, you will get an absolutely clear brush stroke. If it's still a little greasy, it will disperse. So you get this bubbly effect, which is fine. Well, that's enough. Because what I wanted to show you, actually, was if it's, okay, if it's, actually, this is what the white spirit will. So this should be a perfect brush stroke. And solid. It's a, no, it's dispersing, which is what I was going to do with the white spirit. Do you have a little, um, I don't care what it is. No, 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 this is fine, but I just need to put it in a little cup. Egg cup. Uh, yeah, perfect. Perfect, perfect. The principle being that you will put a tiny bit of this on the plate, and of course then it stops it being degreased. If it then becomes a greasy surface. And the brush stroke will then break down, so you get this I don't know what, you, what the technical term for a bubbly technique is, but we call it the bubbly technique. So you can actually play around with that in order to, you can actually control it. Now with a sugar lift, if you don't like what you've done, you have to completely wash it off with hot water. And then you would have to degrease the plate again. Because you will always have a slight residue of the sugar on the plate. Now, we have to dry this as quickly as possible for our second part of our demonstration in order to do the lift. It can take a while to dry, so I would suggest if you've got a warm, uh, that might blow it around, or just put it on a hot plate. 
while we go on to the second stage. <laughs> and the one, this is why I should have come in last night and prepared a plate earlier. <laughs> but I was too busy being entertained upstairs. <laughs> is the second one ready? With your outfit in done. Uh, okay. Jolly good. Okay, so do you want to do the master stroke? It's just to make a, a stroke. Just to make a stroke. <laughs> Yeah, great. Well, that's fine. And we can, it'll be an example. But so that's actually quite nice. So then again, actually, if I do this at the end, a little bit of the solvent to break it down. Yeah, so you'll get the... Oh, the beautiful... And if we put a bit more soap on the... So, the soap is just to lift it off, to enable it to lift off easier. Um, you can, oh, we're going to try the condensed milk. Yeah. I've we never try tried, it. which might be thicker and stickier. Uh, but actually, you will get a positive brush stroke, which we do have here. So I'm not going to do any more, because all of that will lift off. And of course, remembering being an acrident, being an etching, that it will, of course, be in reverse. So are you just going to melt your plate? Yes. Okay, cut while we wait for the plate to dry to go on to the next stage. And we will re... Can you turn the mic off? You have to edit this tape after. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so this is sugar and water. And you just dissolve the sugar and water. Lots and lots of sugar. And I would dissolve it with hot water just to, so it's a saturated solution. But we have also, so you can have ready-made solutions. And we just put a few drops of washing up liquid to enable it to lift off. And just some colour so you can see what you're doing. And the colour can be Indian ink or gouache. It doesn't actually have any purpose. But you need to see where your brush stroke is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then again, it is going to be covered with an acid resist. And it's flexible. You can use liquid ground, you can use um, hard ground, rolled over the plate, in fact. You can use straw hat varnish, just depends what you've got. And then again, hot water will dissolve the sugar and magic is exposed. Um, I just thought that this needed to be nice. You can have it as thick as you like. And all it is is a sugar solution. And you can try it, think it it's, it's a personal thing. It doesn't make any difference to the process. And the ready-made thing sometimes, as I said, the accidents, you know, the result is the same. The, you know, we all know it's like the story of Barto going into the studio on a Saturday and all the shops were closed and there was no sugar, so he used maple syrup because some Canadian student had brought over some maple syrup that was all in the studio, so he tried it. Uh, condensed milk, which I'd never heard of. And I said to one of my, I explained, did a very lengthy um, demonstration to a student once on a summer school, and he went back and he must have spent hours and hours drawing out this meticulously sugar lifted plate. And I looked at it, it was really thick, it was like toffee. I said, what nice of you, it's a beautiful drawing, absolutely exquisite. But I knew he'd spent a long time and I was a bit nervous about ruining his drawing. And I said, what did you use? He said he used ice cream topping, <laughs> which I'd never heard of it. But anyway, it's some ghastly, gloopy, chocolate, syrupy stuff that you put on top of ice cream. But of course, it worked absolutely perfectly because it was just completely solid sugar. And that was thick. It did work beautifully. Absolutely beautifully. I think I even went out and bought some of the stuff. Because also, it comes in a, in a, a, a sort of squeezy tub, like ketchup. So you can actually squeeze it out. It's gorgeous. So you don't even get the brush stroke. You get a, a line. So there's always something new to learn, and I bet you've got something different here. What condensed milk we've, dis we've discovered today? I think it's the Neil who suggested it, because we read it in a William Sandwich book. Yeah. But I have there the condensed milk. Yeah, let's have a go. We put it outside to warm up. The liquor fire. 
so I put it in the sun. It's not but also, boring. you could put it into like a syringe or what are those icing bag, yeah. couldn't you? With condensed milk, with that stuff, you couldn't. It's too liquid. Actually, condensed milk would be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pipe, piped sugar liquid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, then this is for your homework for tomorrow before you uh, finish your course. And I'll come back and see your exhibition to test it. <laughs> How's the uh, drying time going? It does take a bit of time, so we might need to um, do some chinquelé while we're waiting, perhaps. Yes. Okay, so chinquelé is very simple. Um, again, it's a process of collaging paper onto your, and again, Chinese paper. Bartow did a phenomenal amount of it. And as with all things, with any process, Bato was one for breaking the rules. And fabric, and he used a lot of very thin fabric to do, um, in fact, we have Bato's box of tricks here. And actually with thin fabric, sometimes it would crease, but the paper, and it would squash. You might need to take a bit of the pressure off. Now this stuff, do you know, does everyone know what this is? It's actually from uh, China, from Macau, and they're for burning, they have money for burning in the temple. Okay. So we did thousands of these. Now, it's a metallic paper. Sometimes it works beautifully, and sometimes, it's, like a, it's not like a gold leaf, but it's like a really cheap imitation gold leaf. The, and there were silver ones, and there was a whole face of suddenly everyone was doing these things, and every Christmas card had this stuff on it. Because you buy like one chip, hundreds of the stuff. Occasionally, with the pressure from the press, it actually gets embossed into your etching plate, into the deep lines. And you have to, and it is impossible to get out. So if you have a very deep line, no guarantee is like with all printmaking things. Sometimes it works perfectly, and quite often it doesn't. And Joe Bolly did a lot of this stuff, and it's gorgeous stuff. So we can have a go, but not on a precious plate. I do not want to be responsible for ruining somebody's plate. So, especially the silver ones, I seem to remember, had a, well, the naughty ones. <laughs> probably why they're more than that. So the principle is that it's paper which is colour fast, because you're going to print it with dampened paper. So we have had, usually on foundation courses, and the evidence is there for everyone to see, you use tissue paper, you say tissue paper and everyone goes and buys cheap wrapping tissue paper, which are not colour fast. You put it through the press, huge streaks of red on your blanket, which are very difficult to get rid of. This is the most beautiful Japanese paper, which actually Caroline Isgar, if anyone knows, look at her work, she makes beautiful etchings and prints. Uh, and there's a fantastic colours, it's from Faulkner's. And not cheap, this is cheap. So that's all the... Yeah, I recognise the colours. Yeah. I, I told them that at uh, some point we will be doing these tiny little bits of paper that would go into specific parts of the, of the prints. And it was almost like the most precious work that you could be doing. <laughs> everything has to be cut out, you know, and then you have to put everything in a piece of paper individually for each print. So, and then uh, you also did this with Barton. So, that was quite a ridiculous aspect of that. I hope it's the beginning of Was it for your work or was it for his work you were printing? For his work? Yeah. Wow. Also, there were times when it was going to be freestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he would give you the, the, the freedom to choose which bits of paper to use on, on you know, what parts of the, of the print. And he did a, a Oh, the that, yeah. Fernandinha helped. That's right. That yeah. And she would cut out different dresses. That's right. The dresses were hilarious. And sometimes with the dresses, then he started using the fabric with the dresses. Yeah, exactly. And with the teddy bear. There's actually a catalogue here from the show with all the, the well, not all, but like six kai kai prints. And they're all different. And one of them has a burka. And yes. The other one that's has right. A, uh, we did some at the slave, actually. Yeah. They're amazing. They're really good. <laughs> 
And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes the fabric was too thick. And I think they were, he was having a tear out of his window. So they were like old dresses and personal, you know, personal clothes. It's a great thing to do when you want to get rid of your clothes. Yeah. It was fantastic. Yeah. So which plates are you printing for the shingle? So like somebody, I would like my assistant, <laughs> one of my assistants, to ink up a plate yeah. in preparation. Really just an ordinary um, yeah, plate. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll do uh, a do we have the wallpaper face mixed up? I'll, I'll, we have, um, you had some powder, you said, from Barto. Uh, yeah, and yeah. we also have uh, the, 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 we have also this one, which we've been using and it works really well. Okay. This one. Well, whatever you like to use. So it's thin. Okay, the traditional way is to use uh, it's like a completely um, organic wheat paste or rice glue, something with absolutely no chemicals in. Um, and actually what you do, do you know the, the actual traditional accurate way, which Barto would never have stuck to, was using a wheat paste or... Um, uh, no, 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 and I don't do it either, but at the World College they do it. And they actually coat the paper first, mm -hmm. so you tape down your stencils and you coat it with the wheat paste glue, you leave it to dry, again this takes a long time, and then you reapply it and then you paste it on. But actually, with Barto we go fast and furious, wallpaper based, and actually all the Chapman brothers who do a phenomenal amount of chinfolé with all their etchings, which are amazing, uh, they use wallpaper based. Cellulose based, no chemical, it doesn't corrode. Yeah. But even Bardo has been known to use a prick stick. <laughs> okay. You have to edit oh, that bit no. for advertising. <laughs> <laughs> spray paint, spray mount is the only lethal thing. But I he, think and he did use it. <laughs> he used it with the fabric. Yeah. yeah. So. So. He was very liberal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like if it that. works, it works. I think yeah. this was all of us. So would this be um, Great. good for good, the good, good. Yep, perfect. So I'm just going to cut some paper and soak so it. So you soak your normal paper as for ordinary printing, um, the length of time you would usually do it, a somerset, an arch, whatever you weave, whatever yeah. you're using. Okay. Ink up the plate as normal, so you can combine colours on the plate. Uh, you can actually combine it with intaglio and uh, roller relief ink if you want a multiple of colours. Mm -hmm. You would, okay, so you would actually normally, if you're doing it properly, you would cut all your stencils for the chine collet first. So if you're doing, say, an addition of 20, you would cut 20 pieces like this. The chine collet can either be, traditionally, it would be cut like a millimetre larger than your actual plate. So it would, in fact, fill, it's like some of the pieces I have in the book, which are, they're like the line drawings, uh, the children's line. So in fact, it just gives it a tone, and they will be that sort of, oh, it's beautiful. It was very, the cheapest tissue from John Purcell, Japanese tissue. I think it was a gampy tissue, so it's like a, a tea stain. So it just gives it a hue of colour, which separates it from the white of the paper. So you would cut the tissue just a tiny bit larger than the plate. So the, and in fact, I've done it without a paste, because it's so thin. And the emboss and the pressure from the, um, plate combined with the size in your normal printing paper is enough to, to, to adhere it. So that, that way you would do it like that, but this stuff I know sometimes the gold, it's fine, sometimes it works and sometimes, and it's a bit it's okay. thick. It's, um, well we can try. Okay, so I think for to this, well we'll do a couple. And also, so you can also tear fragments or cut fragments. We've used newspaper and say newspaper, okay, it's not archival, it probably won't last for long, <laughs> but I remember a student doing these amazing prints and actually their images weren't particularly interesting, but then they combined it with just, because we use newspaper on the table to clean the plate, so they would choose cut out um, photographs from the newspaper and use that as a chine collet, yeah, was and it's amazing. I talking to Inez about that because she was doing um project with the people on an airplane and I was suggesting that instead of drawing out the, the rest of the airplane, using images yeah. of airplanes and Perfect. shape away. Yeah. But again, it's not ar archival and it doesn't have like the no, same no, but do you, yeah. it, won't, it won't last. 
But It'll last for a, a while. It's an interesting <laughs> process as well. It's yeah. completely different to proper machine pulling. Absolutely. Way, or using old tickets or using yeah. you know, any, any. Print, printed matter. And for you, if you're doing, you know, you can actually use photocopies or you could actually yeah. print your own text with John Ball printing out. And then, so that really breaks it up, the idea of sort of concrete smashing up of language. Mm -hmm. nice. okay, so, I'll so those two are nice colours. So if you want to do a few with these, yeah, why don't we try it silver, with a silver one? one with gold, okay. And then just a few random ones. Yeah. And I'll prepare like five sheets. Great. And we do five. Okay, unless you've got a couple more plates that you want to have a whole lot inked and then we can run them through. If anyone else has Just a small plate that's... that's yeah. Who else? Bertilio? No? Yeah. Yeah. Just a small plate. Yeah. 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 Just ink up a couple of plates yeah. and then we can yeah. run them through the press. You ready for the sugar list? Okay. 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 Dirty hands. Fantastic. So, <laughs> I'm looking at the leopard a bit. I think we have to get the leopard in somewhere. So, do you have a piece of tissue I can put down here or something? Jolly mm. good. Oh great, so okay. we can go down. Yeah. So we'll be able to go down whenever you want. Okay. Yeah. After the tutorial. Great. I tell you what, it might be good to see it beforehand because then I'll know the sort of space that you're going to be hanging the work in. So when we finish this, we can yeah. go down. Uh, Oh, great. Yeah, absolutely perfect. Couldn't be better. What sort of size? Well, I'm just going to... So, the paste... Okay. That's fine. We'll have a go. Is it wood glue? Yes. Great. But we can also... It's the same. Well, no, no, this is a uh, wallpaper uh, paper. This is wallpaper paper. Yeah, okay. Like well, I've used this. I use that yeah, stuff quite thin. I've never used this. Yeah. Oh, I see. I okay. You have to be really careful when it does it because if you put too much on the, on the recipient and you add water, it just this well, huge yeah. so but don't you mix it up and then leave it to settle? <laughs> yes, yes. But we sometimes when we would do it, we preparate the day before yeah. and the next day before. Yeah. Humongous! It's solid. solid. So it's harder to control. So, okay, fine. For the moment, so this is fine, yeah. absolutely fine. So you can put it on yeah, either with a brush or with a card. Uh, yeah, we can try with the brush. You don't need very much as long as the pressure is set up. The only thing to remember, of course, is that you put your paper glue side up. Yeah. You do not put your paper glue side down on the, on the plate. It's like an English beer glass, not a Portuguese <laughs> beer glass. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, you ready? Go for it. You need a big glass. Big glass. Also, for sugar lift, you can use car. Well, it's not 
No, no, we're not going to watch. <laughs> ah, whose book is that? Someone doing some Japanese stab binding. Okay. Well, I was saying Claire Vine, you know, she would love to come and do a book workshop with her one day. So. Yeah. She actually set up the bindery at the Slade. And she teaches now, she teaches at the Gillette and she teaches at Camelot. this year, very much about, I think I might even have it with me, but about, you know, embracing of how people go, oh, what digital print is it going to, but actually it just makes it more accessible for people. Everyone's more familiar with sort of um, layering and collaging and uh, manipulating images, so I think, it, and cheap publication, so I think it's actually a really positive move. I don't know if Paul Colwell discussed that when he was here. <laughs> something new for Yeah. And how do you change your practice? Oh, that's odd because he's a big, um, he was a big sort of um, supporter of digital art. Yeah, exactly. And then screen printing came in, and as I said in my talk, but, oh, you're ready. Is that actually when you become comfortable with a form or a process, you have to shift, you have to change it yourself. So I think he's right that we're constantly embracing new processes. And you go, oh God, it's difficult. I don't know how to work this technology. And then you go, oh, actually, I can use it like this. I don't have to use it like this. So no matter, um, you know, the combination of digital print and how it's a positive thing. And Joe Stockholm's another visitor for your list for next year. Mm. Yeah, she would be great to get down here because she would talk about across the form of traditional and contemporary and digital and you know, analog things. And I'm saying she wrote a lovely essay. Catalogue last year, and even you could, it's reflected in the Royal College 
degree show, printmaking, film, performance, painting, installation. It embraces the manipulation of images, really. OK, we're ready. So, OK, here we have our ready inked plate by my trusty assistant, who's going to place it on the etching press. Okay, nice registration. Yeah, general. It's just a general example, so I'm not looking for perfect registration. Okay, so we've got an explosion of form here. I think it'd be quite interesting to have something shooting off the plate. Okay, do you want to come and choose some... Ah, so it might ruin it. Yes, Okay. So here we have... No, it's actually the... It seems to be the nature of my workshop, that whatever I do is going to fail. So this is a good start. And I think Barto would approve of that. So a very thin layer of the glue. Remembering that the glue is going to go up on the back. Okay, so this is Bartos own chincole paper. So we place. If, if the silver one is tricky. If the silver one is tricky, yeah. and that's why I said, well, we are doomed to fail. So we can't fail really. Now we've decided we're going to fail. So again, you would line it up, and there's actually a perfect size for this beautifully etched plate. Place it carefully over your plate. So, and then you place on top with my other trusty assistant, even with a fold. Johnny Good. No, I quite like that. A bit of imperfection. It's a good. Oops, now we moved it. Like a bookmark. You can turn down the corner of the page. So there we go. So, is there a front side? A bit dark. I didn't see which side. Which way up is the plate? Yes, like this. Is this the top? No, this is the this bottom. Is the top. Okay. Silence. <laughs> <laughs> dum, da, dum, dum. Thank you. 
changing by its photo. Yeah, <laughs> it's what it's 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 all yeah. 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 Some blotting paper yeah. or something yeah. if there's not like sticking it up. Yeah. We have more pressure without it. Yeah. So should we should you take this out and do it? No, 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 I'll leave it. Let's run it through one more time. We can't but do you want to watch paper on one? Something thicker. Yeah. Anything that's a bit thicker. Oh, something more. We'll just fold it in half. Um, that's that's we try it one eyes, just to check. Okay. 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 Yeah. It's nice seeing those jellyfish, I remember that. You see that yeah. there in all these, and so many of his yeah. prints. Yeah. 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 The test of the muscles. <laughs> that looks better. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, because now you're starting to get creases, I think that's probably... Mm. I have a look. I don't feel brilliant. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Still no? No, 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 but keep, because just in the place that we, you have the aqua tint, it goes on the, the plate. The other ones, you have the silver. I said yeah. this was the nature of, of the, the paper, yeah. And yeah, the that's demonstration. exactly ah, what it used to happen to us. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like it looks good. Not it looks good on the plate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And the actual etching is offset onto the silver. Yeah. So you have a ghost of a ghost of a ghost. Yeah. Now, sometimes that does come off. I would use a toothbrush to get it off. Okay. And, um, it's okay. That's very sticky. And this is normal. Don't go here on the edges because it's no. completely. To, to have it loose. So it's entirely up to you, but actually, I think because of the, if there'd been more pressure, that yeah. would have adhered okay. completely flat, which would be the idea. But also because the paper is yellow, in fact, you don't see the difference. Whereas if it was a whiter paper, then you get the, you get a real. And actually, if I was doing it, I would actually have cut the chine collet so it was a millimeter larger than the plate. So then it, you would just frame it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which would be the idea. Mm -hmm. But if we got, we could try another one. Yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we can just add a bit of part. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting a little bit of color for you. What? Do you want some clean tissue? It might come off okay, just with a cloth, but otherwise use a toothbrush. Great. Ah, oh, that's good. Okay, now we're watching. So I think we'll go for a bit of. Um, yeah, yeah, is that your plate? Yeah. Okay, so you want to place it on here uh, and then a little bit of the glue. Just a thin layer and it'll absorb most of it. So you wait for it to dry a little bit. <coughs> then glue side up. Now it's a good idea to have it overlap the edge. So then you get, it actually breaks out of the frame and also the corner, the, the emboss of the plate will help it to adhere. Do you want another one or do you want just that? 
Yeah, okay. I want to put another one. So if you take it over the edge of the... No, you don't want it over the edge. Okay, I was going to say, if you take it over the edge, and then you actually... One that helps to no, you okay, you know you have a specific image in mind. You do I feel going to do my own thing. Get my mouth up. Okay. Lovely. <laughs> then the etching the You can put some paper on top, be fine, you put it over yeah. there, yeah. <coughs> Thicker. That's a good idea. That's great. are in keeping with the colour of the paper, the form sits and it just floats so it becomes absolutely integrated with the image. Yeah, so you need that much pressure. So you can't even scratch it off inside the paper? Well, you leave it straight. You could, no, you could pull it off now and then you have a white um, silhouette. You can have a white shape. It's like a mess. Like a mess. Oh, like a mask. No, it's not. Just like a Sorry, mask. my ex. A mess. <laughs> mess. It's like a big mess. <laughs> well, reflective of my demonstrations. How's the sugar lift doing? Are we ready? Or oh, we have some more chink on it. Anyone has an That's great. Yeah, fine. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be fine. Fine, fine. Yes, fine. Absolutely fine. Okay, so we need to, I would, with a liquid ground, traditionally with a sugar lift, you, would, you could actually, they used to pour it over the um, plate. And you do it in a little bath, a little photograph of an acid tray, and then you pour it back in the tin. Now, Bajo and I, we would mix up like stop out varnish with cellulose thinners. Ah, which, screen wash. It's, but it's uh, not very nice fumes. But what happens is, is the fumes evaporate very fast. Uh, sorry, the solvent evaporates very fast and it dries. Liquid ground is fine. So it's just a thin varnish that we're going to put on top. So again, you can pour it. It's a bit wasteful. I would just use a soft brush. And this stuff is great. Yeah. So we have some newspaper or something. And I would stand it vertically. So we need some newspaper or something. We can just brush it on and stand the plate up. Lovely. Yeah, it's been an experiment. How thick it is. Uh, yeah, thank you. Oh, that looks fine. It might be a bit thick. I would actually use a wide, soft brush, uh, which I couldn't fit in my bag. But anything. Oh, that looks beautiful, but it might be good. That looks great. Okay, what we will need for the next day, this will dry, this doesn't take long to dry. You can use a hair dryer on this. Uh, will be some hot water. Do you have a kettle or anything? Yes. Now this is the one with no aquatint, isn't it? I've sort of lost track of it. This is just a naked plate.
So thin and even. And of course, I would turn it upside down because otherwise you get thicker at the bottom. And thinner at the top. So there we go, we've got another one. There's a little one, is that okay? Sure. Yeah. Okay, like, uh, can you put it on the hot plate? It's not a bit Yeah, just for a few minutes. It's a bit tacky. Yeah, take two seconds. No. That's a very sensible question. Okay, so we can either leave that to dry or we can use the hair dryer. Five minutes. And then we put it in a, a tray with some hot water. Do you have a clean acid? So it's thin. Because if you do it horizontally, it can be too thick. And if it's too thick, it doesn't lift off. Okay. Hot water. Well, people say, you know, just ordinary water will work, but I use hot water, it's quicker. Yeah. Oh, good. That will work. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, and if you, as you say, if you flatten it with some yeah. weights on top, and, yeah. and then it'll die, it'll actually glue it. But that's gorgeous, isn't it? The way it, the way it breaks out of the frame. And you could even take it right off the paper. And you could use several colours, so you actually had, you know, the colours, the tissue overlap, overlapping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Keeps it warm. Yeah. Okay, we'll just leave it for a few minutes.
Somebody made this book, which was like each page was that size, and it was beautiful. And they had it on the floor with a big pillow, so it was open, and all sorts of yeah, collide, collide. It. And so they should have images up soon. Uh, and there's a great mix of sculptural. Somebody made this big book in a an old filing cabinet, so you pull out each drawer, and you had to go up a ladder to open the drawers. And then the book would sort of pop out, the images would pop out, and it was all the book. The images in the book, in the drawers, were made of found papers from uh, the Olympic site. Uh, the beginning, you know, that whole destruction of um, buildings and communities to build the Olympics. And again, the filing cabinet was found there. So, and it was a really so interesting. And there was film, book, films, bookers film, bookers film. Yeah, exactly. And exciting. You have to go. Okay. Well. Oh, she was. Old. Okay. Okay. Well, best of luck. Well, please get in touch, Anna. And you know, if you're coming. To London, yes. we'll hook up with Joe. Yeah. It'd be lovely to see your work as well. Yes. Nice to meet you nice briefly. You. Okay, I think this is dry. So we have our next stage of the magic sugar lift. Actually, what I usually do is I get the hot water and I pour it on the um, plate. 
so it might be better to, it's not quite hot enough. Yeah, do you want to heat the kettle up a bit more? Then we have a cinematic moment. Then we have a bit more drama. Put, put it on to boil. Oh, I love it. Then, sugar, then um, chinko later turn, takes off, and everyone's doing chinko. <laughs> But everyone, unfortunately, has learned about the silver early on. It's a good thing we did it first. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the kettle. Oh. I thought it was ready, but it cooled cool down very fast. I love these. I love the it's granite, isn't it? So said it was cheaper to get granite than to have anything else. And they're all local stone. Mm -hmm. Magic food. There we go. Perfect. And actually, you can decide to stop. Sometimes you go, oh, and it hasn't all lifted off, and you want to keep it as a sort of speckle. There's probably a bit more there. Great. That's done. Ready to use. And if you find it sticks a bit too much, um, you can use a little paintbrush to. No, 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 a paintbrush to just get it off. Actually, I think it's rather nice like that. Yeah, but I think that's fine, isn't it? I think we've got most of it off. Yeah, no, it's going to make more marks. I think we just leave it like that. Bingo. So that is now ready to go in the acid. So I'm going to put, get rid of the hot water and just put some cold on so you can handle it. Uh, stop out the back of the plate. 
So that will give you a positive. That will be, yep, that will be a white line. And this will be, and this you can have, so you can do it quite lightly, and then you can do it quite heavily, and you'll get a gradation of tone. Thank you. 